Welcome to Dr. Anima Upadhyay's Chemistry Lab videos. Today's video I am making on request from my viewers who have requested me to make a video on possible viva questions on the standardization of sodium thiosulfate solution using standard potassium dichromate solution. I am highly delighted that my viewers are finding a nice teacher in me and liking my videos and my way of explanation. In the past also, I have made videos on request. So now it is your turn to increase my viewership. Please recommend and ask your friends and colleagues to subscribe my channel. You too, if you have not subscribed till now, subscribe my channel. And don't forget to like and share my videos too. So let us start with today's experiment. In this experiment, we are using standardization of sodium thiosulfate and standard solution of potassium dichromate. What do you mean by standard solution? A standard solution means a solution whose strength is known to us. What are the various ways in which you express the strength of a given solution? The strength is expressed in terms of grams per liter, parts per million, milligrams per liter, normality, molarity and so on. What do you understand by standardization? Standardization means the solution of unknown strength is titrated against a solution of known strength using some indicator and with the help of this standard solution we can calculate the strength of the unknown solution thereby standardizing it. Once the strength is known it becomes a standard solution. What salts can be used as primary standard salts? The substances which can be converted into a standard solution directly after weighing them and dissolving them in the solvent are called primary standard salts. What are the examples of primary standard salts? Potassium dichromate, oxalic acid, Mohr salt, ferrous ammonium sulfate are some examples of primary standard salt. What are the characteristics of primary standard salt? The primary standard salts are pure, dry, non-hygroscopic and have a constant weight. What are the substances called which cannot be converted into a standard solution directly by weighing and dissolving it in the solvent? The substances which cannot be used to prepare a standard solution directly by weighing and dissolving in solvent are called secondary standard salts. Can you give some examples of secondary standard salts? Sodium thiosulfate, potassium permanganate, sodium hydroxide. These are some substances which are the examples of secondary standard salts. What is this method of titration which you are performing to standardize the sodium thiosulfate with the standard potassium dichromate solution? This Titration is called redox titration and because we are using potassium iodide in this titration, so we can also call it iodometric method of titration. Although iodometry is redox titration only. What are the reagents 
needed to perform this experiment. The reagents required are a standard solution of potassium dichromate, a solution of sodium thiosulfate whose strength has to be determined, 10% solution of potassium iodide, a freshly prepared solution of starch which is used as an indicator and dilute hydrochloric acid. Can you explain the procedure in brief? To perform this experiment, the sodium thiosulfate solution which is, which is to be standardized is filled in the burette. In the conical flask, 20 ml of standard potassium dichromate solution is taken to which 10 ml hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid is added followed by the addition of 10 ml 10% potassium iodide solution. Now this solution is titrated against the sodium thiosulfate solution from the burette. The starch is not added in the beginning. When the color changes to light brown, at this time a few drops of starch is added and the color changes to violet blue. The addition of sodium thiosulfate from the burette is continued. When the color changes from violet blue to light green, the reading is recorded from the burette. This is called the end point. The titration is repeated to get a concordant value. Every time we are doing the titration, fill the burette with the solution up to the zero mark. Once the titration is complete, we can go for calculations and the formula employed is N1V1 is equal to N2V2. What is N1? What is V1? N1 and V1 is the normality and volume of potassium dichromate. N2 and V2 is the normality and volume of sodium thiosulfate. So we know N1, V1 and V2. So we can calculate N2. V2 is the volume which we are recording from the burette. You are using a freshly prepared solution of starch. Why? A freshly prepared solution of starch is required every time because starch decomposes on storage and it loses its sensitivity. So we cannot star store the starch for 2 to 3 days. We have to use freshly prepared starch every time we perform the experiment. Is this a direct method of standardization? No, it is an indirect method. Potassium dichromate does not react with sodium thiosulfate directly. What happens when you add potassium iodide to the potassium dichromate solution which is acidified with hydrochloric acid. When the potassium iodide is added to acidified potassium dichromate solution, an equivalent amount of iodine is liberated. So potassium dichromate solution acts as a strong oxidizing agent in acidic medium. Does the potassium dichromate gains the electrons or loses the electrons? Potassium dichromate gains the electrons because itself it is undergoing reduction. Though it is an oxidizing agent and it is oxidizing iodide to iodine but itself it is getting reduced to chromate ions. What is the oxidation state of chromium in potassium dichromate? The oxidation state of chromium in potassium dichromate is plus 6. What oxidation state is for the chromate ions? It is plus 3 for the chromate ions. So dichromate is getting reduced to chromate ions. And oxidized thing is iodine. What is the role of iodine 
in the titration. The liberated iodine then reacts with sodium thiosulfate solution and oxidizes it to sodium tetrathionate, itself getting reduced to sodium iodide. So, why are you adding starch towards the end and not in the beginning? Starch is not added in the beginning because in the beginning the intensity of iodine is very high and starch forms a stable complex with iodine at a very high intensity. Now if the stable complex is formed, iodine will not be available for titration. This will result into error and this is the reason starch is added towards the end point. Can you tell which one is a strong oxidizing agent, potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate? Potassium permanganate is stronger than potassium dichromate. Although this question is not connected with today's experiment, but still we are talking about the oxidizing agents. So I thought I must tell you this also. Hope you have enjoyed today's video. So keep watching, keep liking and sharing my videos too. Take care of yourself.